what I'm doing is I finished cutting up what was good of the jet dolly of the log that was in there on the sawmill into material that I can actually um, use to make the desk in the corner over there by where the bathroom is going to be and also I may have enough material because I still have part of that tree down there if I cut it all up into two inch pieces I may have enough to finish my um, kitchen countertops too so that's what I'm hoping because these two together uh, that's 14 inches, that's 28. That would actually be a really good countertop. Um, a good deep countertop. And um, then it would also provide uh, enough material for my corner desk too. And I kind of like, really like, um, the way the worms have been digging into it there. So what I'll do is, once I get them glued together, um, I will pour some uh, like that acrylic down in there so that the holes will be filled up. But yeah, this. I'm going to have to, it's pretty dry, you know, because the tree was dead, but I'm going to still let it dry some before I start using it. This bottom piece, which are actually the top piece that I cut off, it bowed on me quite, quite a lot, so I'm not going to use that one. But these three right here, they came out really good. So that will be the three that I use. Plus, like I said, I've still got material down there, so I think we'll be good to go. If not, I think I know where I can get some more. Yeah, I started to cut this at three inches, but I figured that two was enough. So I went ahead and did the full two inches. Because the corner desk, the longest portion is six foot. And then the corner, other corner is about four feet. So since it doesn't have a really big span, uh, full two inches would be just fine. Yep, I'm going to take this around the corner, stack it up, and this is what I'm going to use to make my corner desk out of, and um, I'll probably find uh, some small, not really logs, but posts, shave the bark off of them, and use those for my legs. So, that'll make a really nice... Um, corner desk. There. Ready? Get through it. morning. Uh, a little on the chilly side out here today, so I thought I'd get a fire going. 
stay warm. I got in mind moving those logs. I've got some slab wood over here. I'm going to try to move too. Got the tractor up there warming up. And I believe I've got the fire going pretty good.
Well, I'm sure that you guys have seen me use this before. This is the Husk Premium Knife. It's actually a gourmet knife, a chef's knife, I should say. And I'll tell you what, it is really sharp even from the factory. I haven't sharpened it yet. Um, it's made out of Japanese steel, uh, not German steel, so it's supposed to be a little bit harder. Um, it's got a really nice oak handle. It's curved, kind of like an ulu, so you can rock it back and forth. And it's got this nice finger groove right there. It's also got a place for a lanyard. Um, but it's just, it fits your hand well. It's very ergonomic. We've actually uh, had them sponsor a couple of our videos. And they like our channel so much, they contacted us and they said, why don't you give one of these away? So we're going to have a giveaway today. And um, I want you guys to comment on the video. And out of that, we will draw a name out of the random picker to see who the winner is. And there will be, um, a down in the description section, there will be a um, link to their website to where you can actually purchase that and give them that number. And um, then they will ship that directly to you. But yeah, this is the Husk Knife Made in Japan um, for cooking. And I'll tell you what, we really like it here at the Outpost. enough room. Let's slide that back over. We can stay warm. What I just made is some homemade soup. And I'll tell you what, it's good stuff. That's enough to last me a couple of days. Here. Ah, just a minute. Just a minute. I'll get you some dog food, okay? You want some? Let's see. Come here, Dolly. Come here, Dolly, you eat. Dolly. Come here, Smokey. 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 Over here. There you go. I figured I'd give them a little bit of a treat too. Mmm. That is good.
Well, so basically guys, it comes down to this. If you have never tried this knife right here, might I say that it is worth trying. We've actually had several comments uh, from past videos where people ordered a couple of them. Some of them just one, but they were very pleased with them. So give it a try. They're not that expensive. Uh, we are gonna do the giveaway, but I think they retail somewhere around 30 bucks, but I don't think that you'll be disappointed. And I think if you take good care of it, and it also comes in a really nice box. It's got a magnetic uh, cover on the front of it. So that's where I keep it just like that right there. And uh, yeah, I think if you take care of it, it would last a good long while. last of the slab wood pretty much on this side of the little road there so I don't know that I'm going to move those over there I think just these over here put in right there 
Um, we'll wait and see though. But yeah, got all the logs here. Got that pile over there and this pile here. Now. Well, guys, I got these back out because a couple of videos ago um, I asked if you knew what these were. And we got so many comments, I just thought that I would mention it. Uh, we certainly did really and do appreciate all the comments that you guys send, um, especially all the responses that I got for these. Um, these are actually glass insulators, um, so most of everybody was correct. Um, I don't know that there's any phone poles uh, anymore. Um, everything is pretty much joint use. So the power system, they generally set the pole and then you've got uh, cable TV and you've got a uh, telephone that share that same pole and um, normally you'll have power at the top, then below that you'll have cable TV and then below that you'll have telephone. So um, yeah, whenever you see a telephone pole actually, it's probably only about six to eight inches in diameter and it's just supporting one wire um, and I, I don't even think that they set those anymore um, but I've climbed to many of those but uh, what I was going to say was uh, back in the day when they first came out with the telephones they used these on the actual telephone pole because they weren't joint use at that time and uh, they supported what we used to call open wire which is basically a single strand of wire that was heavy duty and it would go in here and that would keep it from grounding out on the pole. The only thing was um, when we had ice storms and stuff like that the ice would melt, coat that, it would run, it would freeze and it would still ground itself out to the pole. So we had to take layup sticks uh, which are those sticks that you put together and we had to go around we had to beat the ice, beat the wire where the ice would actually fall off um, and then that way the sun could dry it out a whole lot quicker and we could restore service. But that was called open wire. Um, the power company uses basically the same kind of setup. If you see any of these still in use, um, their wire will come through here. It's attached by another little bitty wire because it's much larger gauge. Um, but that would keep that, like I said, from grounding out against the pole. So. Uh, you guys were correct. These were an isolator or insulator. Either word um, is interchangeable. Um, and there's actually some threads up in here. They had a wooden dowel that they would um, put in some of the holes on the arms of the um, hardware that they would put up there. And this actually screwed down on top of it. So you may see many of these in a row, you know, especially if it was telephone. If you watch some of the old movies back in the day, uh, you will see uh, a lot of these on a pole, and they actually kept the lines separated too.
Well guys, we certainly hope that you enjoyed that video. Looks like the dogs are pretty much camped out here. I think I'm going to go ahead and do the same. We want to thank you so much for stopping by and visiting with us up here at the cabin. My son, my daughter, and I, we can't thank you enough for um, your continued uh, views on both of our channels every time we upload a video. So thank you so much for that. We want to wish you guys happy holiday seasons. And uh, we will also want to wish you the greatest upcoming new year. We want to wish everyone a great evening. Everyone take care. And we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.